this is Anjali and today we are going to discuss a few more questions for your Viva final practical for board exam. Now we have discussed already in the previous three videos that how can the questions be asked about Java then we did how questions are asked about your DBMS that is MySQL and questions related to your project. So this is kind of the fourth and the last video for the Viva. So I'm summarizing the whole thing and just covering the topics which we missed in the previous videos. And I guess this is more than enough for your Viva thing. And to talk about SQL, we left with a very simple question. That is what is cardinality and degree of a table, but it's quite important. So cardinality would be your obviously number of rows in the table and degree is the number of columns in the table. That's cardinality and degree of a table. Then it can be asked what is a join. It's a very important thing as per your 12th MySQL syllabus. So join means when we relate two tables. So the definition which you should tell is join is a special condition when we link two tables with the help of a common column. So we have a common column in both the tables and with the help of their equality or any condition we join the two tables. So that's why the join is also called as equi-join if you are using the condition for equality. That's a join. Example could be like if I have uh, an employee working at a department number 10 and I have another table named department where 10 represent accounts. So I can link the tables as employee.department number is equal to department.department .department number. And this join condition is always given in the where clause of your SQL query. Right? And then comes what is the Cartesian product. When we fetch the data from two tables and we miss the condition to join the tables. So you're getting the data from two tables, but you have not given the condition to join the tables, then it becomes Cartesian product. Here, each row of first table gets linked with each row of second table. For example, in first table, I have two rows A and B. In second table, I have rows 1, 2, 3. So when I fetch data from these tables, I'll get A1, A2, A3, B1, B2, B3. That means each row of first table is linked with each row of second table. That is called Cartesian product. It can also be asked, like, what is the degree and cardinality of Cartesian product? This question comes a number of times in theory exam as well. So when we have to find cardinality of Cartesian product, it's number of rows in the first table multiplied by number of rows in the second table. Like we had taken this example where we have A, B and 1, 2, 3. So the first table you have two rows. In the second table you have three rows. In total we get six rows in the result. So cardinality is number of rows in table 1 multiplied by number of rows in table 2. Degree is the summation of number of columns. So number of columns in first table plus number of columns in second table gives me the degree of the Cartesian product. Then it can be asked like how SQL and MySQL are different. This is the question which came in the last year board exam as well. So MySQL is a DBMS. It's a database management system where we can create databases and work on it. Whereas SQL is a language. It's a means of communicating with MySQL. So it's a language with the help of which we can give commands on MySQL. SQL language can be used in Oracle, can be used in FoxPro, Access, anywhere. But MySQL is a DBMS and SQL is a query language. So these are a few things which I thought I missed out in the earlier video. So I'm just covering it over here. In case you still have any term which you're not able to understand, you can write in the comment section below, in the, below this video. Then... Java project, we discussed in the third video, like what all questions can be asked about your Java project. So I'm just brushing up over here. So the questions which can be asked are how many tables are there in your database? So when you have a project, they can ask you like how many tables you have in your database. So you should remember like if I have a library management software and I have a table for storing details about books, then I have a table for storing members and I have a table to store which book is issued to which member and for login details. So I have four tables in total. And it can also be asked like, what is the name of your database? So you should know the name of your database as well. Say the name of my database is lib or library, whatever. You should know that is mentioned in your project's code. So make sure you remember the correct name of the database. 
and then it can be asked like how many screens you have in your project. This is how many windows you have in your project, how many different frames appear. It can be how many frames or how many screens. So you should know whether there are 8, 9, 10, adding any number of screens you have, you should know the exact number. Then one question can be asked about the new keyword. Like in the previous video, I displayed you the code where we saw that line that add member A is equal to new add member and then we write A dot set visible in bracket true. So I told you about set visible thing. So set visible just makes the window to appear on the screen. But what about new? New keyword is used to allocate memory for a frame. So if it is asked what is new keyword, so you can say that new keyword is used to allocate memory for that window and store it in an object. And when we write object dot set visible true, then the window appears on the screen. So that's how we can explain the new keyword. And obviously the most important question about your projects, so let's explain your project. So please prepare it well because this is the most obvious question which can be asked about your project, like what your project is doing, what is it for? So you should know what is your project about. So these are the main questions about Java project and obviously you need to prepare for the JDBC questions. And we have a small weightage of HTML in your syllabus. In theory exam, it's hardly five marks that is including XML as well. But in practical viva, it depends totally on the mood of the examiner, whether he wants to ask something about HTML or not. But we can't just oversee that. So if something can be asked, the major chances are like can be asked about the BR tag, that's break. It's used to give a blank line while displaying the text in an HTML page. Then what is the difference between empty and container tags? So container tags are the ones which have both opening as well as closing tag. Whereas empty tag is the one which has only the opening tag and there is no closing tag available for that. For example, IMG, BR, then you have HR. So these are your opening tags only and they don't have a closing tag. So it's empty and all other tags are the container tags. Then difference between OL and UL, that's ordered list and unordered list. Ordered list shows the points with numbers in front of them and unordered list shows the points with bullets in front of them like this list which is being displayed here is an unordered list then how do you save an html file very simple question which we don't expect that somebody can ask you but yes it can be asked how do you save an html file so we write the code in notepad or notepad plus plus any text editor basically when you save the file make sure you give name of the file and dot html the extension of the file should be dot html or dot htm will also do so we save our file like that and then we open it in the web browser to see how it looks as a web page so to see open it in a web browser you can simply double click the file where you have saved and it will open in your default browser which could be mozilla which could be chrome opera anything then differentiate between HTML and XML. Now, this is a question which appears almost every alternate board exam and it can be asked in the Viva as well. So HTML is your hypertext markup language whereas XML is extendable markup language. So HTML is having a predefined set of tags. We use only those tags in the coding whereas in XML we can create our own tags. HTML is case insensitive. It doesn't matter you write capital or small. XML is case sensitive. HTML has both empty and container tags. XML has only container tags. Then in HTML, we don't need to have a, a DTD, that is document type definition, a separate file used to define the tags. You don't need that. But in XML, since we have to define the tags of our own, so we need to make a file first called ttd document type definition where we define which tags will be there and then we write the XML code. So that's a major difference between HTML and XML. Other than this, you should know like a tag is used for hyperlink, IMG is for image and there are no, so many tags in HTML but don't have to go too much into detail right now but you should know a brief uh, intro or the brief description about major tags of HTML. Then other topics which can be asked, if you're lucky enough, you won't be asked about any such thing in the Viva. But if your examiner is uh, too much interested in Viva or is not in a good mood or really wants to, you know, show you some trouble in the Viva, 
can ask you questions about these topics as well. Those are obviously your theory topics. That is transmission media, what all transmission media I have. So I should know about fiber optic, copper wires, microwave, radio wave and all. Then types of computer network can be asked. So you should know the difference between LAN, MAN and WAN and PAN obviously. Then is network topology. You should know about star, bus and ring topology majorly. Then repeater, modem and bridge. You should know the definition of these terms. So repeater is used to amplify the signals. You want to boost the signals after a distance. Bridge is used to connect two different type of local or metropolitan area networks together. And modem is modulator, demodulator, which is used to connect your computer with internet. It converts the digital signal of the computer into analog signals. And same way while receiving, it converts analog to digital signals. Then open source software with examples. Open source softwares are the ones which are available for free on internet along with their source code. Example is uh, for Mozilla Firefox. Then you have uh, Linux. Then I have PHP. So these are open source softwares. Then you have proprietary softwares which are paid. You need to buy the license and then only you can use these softwares. Examples could be Tally, Photoshop, uh, such some similar ones where you have to pay and then you use them. And shareware are which are free for a certain period but after that you need to buy the license for that like Microsoft Office. Microsoft Office provides you Office only for one month free and then you have to pay to use it. So those are shareware. Mostly games and antivirus softwares come in the shareware version because they are free for the trial version or uh, they are free for a certain time or the features, limited features are free but if you want features beyond that you need to buy that. So these are the few other topics which you should go through in case you have time to prepare for your practical. That's it. I hope you're not, uh, means you don't get the abbreviations in your Viva, but you never know in case uh, it's asked. So you should know the full forms of all important abbreviations like all protocols, names, TCP, IP, and then PPP and your uh, different, different abbreviations like flaws and all which are related to computer networks. But just keep your fingers crossed and hope for the best that examiner should not go into all these details but just prepare it to be on a safer side but the most important thing for viva is obviously your java and mysql so prepare that well prepare it thoroughly and be confident about your project you should be very well informed what your project is doing how many pages you have how many tables you have in the database hope these videos are useful for you to prepare for your practical exam and these 30 marks really matter to make or to boost your percentage. So do prepare well and I'll be uploading a video soon which will show how to solve the lab session in the practical exam. Till then, all the best and hope it helps you to get your 30 out of 30 in the practical exams. All the best. Do well. Thank you.